Back in 2020, FBI agents waited out a suspect in a $35 million Ponzi scheme. Matthew Piercy while he hid in California's Lake Shasta. The accused faced a mountain of charges, including 31 felony counts when he was finally brought in. The action began in the relatively calm city of Redding in Northern California. The scammer led authorities on a vehicle chase through the streets of Redding. The action picked up speed and started to get reckless. While still on busy local streets, Piercy ran off the road twice with his pursuers in tow. The chase didn't begin and end in Redding. Piercy made a bold play for Interstate 5 and headed north. The chase eventually reached Lake Shasta. When the determined man hopped out of his truck, he grabbed something from the vehicle, a point in police chases that usually doesn't end well. The object turned out to be a Yamaha 350LI underwater scooter. Rather than making that cliched last stand, it seemed the scanner was ready to try a legitimate career in scuba diving. Piercy swam into the massive artificial canal where he stayed for 25 minutes using the scooter to go further and faster than any human swimmer. What's even crazier is this all happened in the winter. Temperatures for the area typically hovered in the area of 30 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. He might have lasted longer if it wasn't so cold. But it wouldn't have mattered. Cops had a helicopter positioned over the lake to see the crazy escape play out. When the chilled culprit finally crawled out, feds nabbed him straight away. Before taking him downtown, they were nice enough to give him a dry change of clothes provided by his wife. They even had their medical team give him a once-over to ensure he was okay before throwing the book at him. The dust in Piercy's case has yet to settle as of 2022, but official records speculate that he may get a life sentence. Piercy ran the scam that got him chased into Lake Shasta through two different shell companies, each with its own function and clientele. The two companies, of course, had several things in common. The most prominent items on the list were that they centered on wealth management and that the money they were supposed to be investing and growing went directly into Piercy's pockets. One of the two companies was known as Family Wealth Legacy, and its intended purpose is what it says on the tin. The company targeted those who were already wealthy, but looking to get richer to give future family members a head start. This is actually a pretty tame premise for wealth management and investment firms, but Piercy and his associates put a somewhat different spin on things. With a $50,000 minimum investment in the mix, the bold and risky play paid off, until it didn't. The other company was the more contemporary Zola, this every man's investment firm didn't target any particular audience or boast a lofty minimum like Family Wealth Legacy. Instead, the firm branched into several investment channels such as loans and real estate. There wasn't really a target audience in mind. Common folk were targeted just as gleefully as banks and even the federal government. Their joint PR efforts were the biggest uniting factor in how the two companies were run. Both were said to use an AI-based trading system for moving investments around. Termed the Upvesting Fund, this tool was supposed to use an algorithm that examined Wall Street patterns to get guaranteed returns. For about five years, this lie would be the primary vehicle driving Piercy scams. While Zola and Family Wealth Legacy were the stars of the show, a third company came into play late in the game. In 2019, long after he had discovered that he was being investigated, Piercy used false credentials to start a third shell company. On paper, this company was some sort of medical outfit operating out of Reading. In reality, it was a front for laundering funds from the two other businesses. Between those three companies, Piercy pulled down some $35 million from 2015 to 2020 when he was finally brought to justice. The scam also crossed state lines, and he started at his family's law firm in Illinois, where Family Wealth Legacy was founded. The feds eventually slapped the company with an order to cease operations, but it seemed that order went ignored. Additionally, Family Wealth Management and all of its various branches all held Delaware business licenses, regardless of where they operated. The answer to how Piercy and his people made $35 million appear from thin air is actually quite simple. They started by getting in some initial investments, lying to their investors, and using early money to pay them back. They ran a textbook Ponzi scheme. But like every Ponzi scheme, the money eventually dries up. It's definitely worth noting that Piercy couldn't always keep up the facade. 
On many occasions, investors let him know they had enough, and he almost always had a clever response. Many victims believed their money was tied up and that reporting the company would violate their signed contract. These all came back to bite Piercy as extra charges for witness tampering. The money that disappeared off the top went to a wide range of personal affairs. Piercy bought two houses and paid off some credit cards. He also used the money to cover operational expenses for the two major shell companies. Naturally, this included paying dividends and withdrawals to customers. One of the more curious items was $1,195 spent on a Yamaha Model 350 LIC scooter. Many people don't think about single-man underwater propulsion systems very often. They're usually relegated to fictional curiosities like the gadget in the PlayStation game Ape Escape. They are, however, an authentic category of hardware. In that market, Yamaha has a strong position with multiple models. One of those sitting near the top of the heap is the 350LI that was used in this crazy escape. Its nearly $1,200 price tag puts the 350LI firmly in the top end of the market. In fact, many top picks from reliable publications come in at around half the price. That money gets you a scooter that can move up to 4 miles per hour in water and run for about 75 minutes on a single charge. Compared to contemporaries in the field, this one is definitely head and shoulders above the rest. Even so, it wasn't enough to help Piercy. The feds reported that Piercy entered Lake Shasta and stayed there for about 25 minutes. There were multiple instances where authorities couldn't make visual contact with Piercy and had to track him by the bubbles rising from the water. No details were provided as to how he may have been breathing underwater, if that was the case at all. One source says that a well-trained person could hold their breath without special preparations for about 11 minutes at a stretch. Bear in mind that the average person can barely surpass a minute. This feat requires serious training and conditioning. Genetics also plays a role, as does preparation. After inhaling pure oxygen, a Spanish diver once stayed down for just over 24 minutes. Even assuming that Piercy was a stellar swimmer with a talent for holding his breath, or had some breathing equipment with him, his chances of making it across were slim. Lake Shasta is roughly 35 miles on its longest side. At the pace of the Yamaha machine, he would have taken some nine hours to get across. By then, his scooter's battery would be dead, and the police would have driven around to the other side. And uh, don't forget about hypothermia. Sometime in 2018, Piercy found out that he was under investigation. Any honest business owner would have gathered any evidence of legitimacy they had and come forward. Piercy, well, Piercy did the exact opposite. Keeping transparency to a minimum was the standard for Piercy, and that didn't change when he came under scrutiny. In fact, he got even bolder. He sent a letter to then-president of the United States, Donald Trump, championing Zola as the troubled banking industry's salvation. He even tried to get investors to join it. While this was all before the devastation that the COVID-19 pandemic wrought on the global economy, the United States wasn't exactly breaking fiscal records that year. Wall Street was a cautiously optimistic place around that time, so Piercy's proposed plan probably wouldn't have gone over too well. Not that trying to scam the entire United States government is a better plan. He would later point to this letter as the reason subpoenas were going out to staff and investors, hiding the real focus of the investigation. The Book of Proverbs in the King James Bible says, A fool and his money are soon parted. This biblical saying became apparent in Piercy's dealings with the infamous Bethel Church, a megachurch out of Reading. It's a wealthy church with over 11,000 mostly wealthy members. The twist here is that they believe very strongly that God still does miracles these days, and that's what Piercy used to get into the congregation's wallets. As a church member, Piercy had some influence on the inside. He began injecting Judeo-Christian platitudes into his businesses. His appeals definitely didn't fall on deaf ears. Church members began investing in droves, forming the bulk of his income for the two businesses at one point. None of them knew they had been taken in until it all blew up in 2020. This is even more embarrassing because it's not Bethel Church's first rodeo. The congregation has seen a similar scam in the not-too-distant past. In 2016, a man named David Arnold Souza began scamming church members. Taking advantage of their faith, and allegedly their advanced age in some cases, Souza told members that he knew how to work the stock market. He proceeded to fleece about $650,000 from the church at large. The money went to dental work, travel, gym membership, and a rental Cadillac costing a cool $1,800 a month. He ultimately ended up netting an 18-year sentence for his scheming and was ordered to pay back about $520,000 to his victims. He won't be eligible for parole until he served at least nine years of that sentence. 
Kenneth Winton of Oroville started out as just another person's scam. Piercy pulled him in and had him throwing money into the pot. At some point though, things changed. Piercy invited Winton to come aboard and help him manage Zola. Before long, the two were thick as thieves. Winton was in on the scam. Winton's time at Zola started as a token role in customer service. He took on angry clients and did all he could to keep them from going to the cops with the whole thing, keeping up the appearance of a successful finance company. By 2019, he was appointed the CEO of Zola and had a hand in operating family wealth legacy. In 2020, not long before things hit the fan, Piercy handed Zola over to Winton and let him handle it as the owner. Winton ended up pleading guilty with sentencing set for February of 2021. Details on what happened to him aren't easily available, but he faced almost 20 years in jail. He'd also have to pay a $250,000 fine. Piercy, the man at the center of it all, still seems to be awaiting sentencing. Available records don't indicate any entry of a plea at the moment either. In any case, things aren't looking good for the engineer of family wealth legacy. With 31 felony counts hanging over his head, Piercy's chance of avoiding prison time are extremely low. Some of his charges carry standard penalties of 20 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. This will of course be in addition to any ordered reparations. With Piercy's accounts mostly drained, officials will have difficulty figuring out how to pay back victims. Piercy himself is most likely in for a life sentence, according to court documents. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section what you think the greatest cop movie is of all time.